Welcome back to the Distressed Princess. I thought since I have some new subscribers, I would just pop on here and say hello and introduce myself a little bit. My name is Rhonda and I'm the Distressed Princess. I love everything farmhouse, cottage, shabby chic, white chippy paint, lots of white paint. And I just love crafting and I love to do everything on as cheap a budget as possible. So if all that sounds good to you, then come along for the ride. I'll show you how I decorate my home inexpensively and I have fun doing it. And my sincerest thank yous for joining my channel. I'm so happy to have you here. Kirkland's is hands down one of my favorite stores to shop around in, but sometimes their price tag can be kind of steep. So the last time I was in there, I found three items that I knew that we can make it at home ourselves for much cheaper than that price tag. Starting with this large piece of wall art, it had a price tag of $39.99 and I knew it would be pretty easy to duplicate. They have a two pack of these large canvases for $5 at five below. So I'm going to use one of them to make this wall art. You'll also need some chipboard. I've put a link in my Amazon store for 12 by 12 pieces of chipboard. You'll need at least four sheets. The first step in this project is to paint your canvas. And I really thought that I was going to swap out my colors. The art piece in the store had a deeper blue color, almost a country blue, but not the 90s old style country blue. Um, and I really thought that I wanted to switch that for this aqua blue color. However, after I got the whole canvas painted, I decided no, I really didn't like that. So I'm going to mix up some paint that is similar to the blue color in the store. I started with Apple Barrel English Navy and I added to it some of the Waverly chalk paint in the color Crystal and just a touch of black chalkboard paint. And I wanted the chalkboard paint to serve as kind of a thicker paint because we're going to make a design in this paint as well. This is the cake decorating tool that I found at the Dollar Tree and it's going to help us get the corrugated line look that's through the artwork at Kirkland's. So before I use the comb, I wanna put a second coat of that deeper blue color onto the canvas because when I drag the comb through the paint, I don't want any of the white canvas showing through and I don't want any of that aqua blue color that I first painted on showing through. So um, I think that you'll need two coats of this blue color. While your second coat of paint is still wet, then you'll use the finer tooth comb to drag through the paint and make those lines. Now, of course, if you can't find this comb in the Dollar Tree, just buy any old regular comb. Get a comb from the hairstyling section and it should give you the very same effect. Now put the canvas aside to dry while we work on the decorative pieces. On the chipboard, I drew three different sizes of petal shapes and they're just oval shapes that have a point on each end and I drew a large, a medium, and a small. Then I cut them out using my scissors, but I realized a utility knife would have done a better job. Then I used those three pieces as templates to trace around and make 11 more 
of each one for a total of 12 petals in each size. Oh, and an additional seven of the smallest size, so a total of 19 of the smallest size ones. And I found it much easier to use my sharp utility knife with a cutting mat underneath to get these bad boys cut out. Another option would be to use a Cricut to cut through this chipboard to make these shapes, or maybe you might could find in the wood section of Hobby Lobby or Michael's some already made wood chips that are the correct size and shapes. After the petals are all cut out, then you need to paint them white, and I used Rust-Oleum Linen White Chalk Paint. And I only did one side because the other side is going to be glued to the canvas and you won't see it. And before you know it, you have a whole table full of chipboard petals painted white ready to be glued to the canvas. Before gluing them down, I arranged them into their flower shapes, laying down six petals on the bottom and then six petals on top in between the gaps of the original six petals. These are the large size petals that I'm using for this flower. The next flower, I'll use the medium size petals. I used the small size petals for this flower down here in the bottom corner. And the extra seven petals go for the flower that's kind of looks like it's going off the edge of the canvas here at the top. Once you have the placement how you like it, then remove the top layer and begin gluing down each petal. And here is the finished wall art looking pretty much just like the one in Kirkland's but for much less than the $40 price tag. When all is said and done, I only spent $7.50 to make this. Since my hands are on camera a lot, I do like to keep my nails painted and looking as nice as possible. And so that brings me to the product that I want to share with you today, Madam Glam. Madam Glam sent me a gel kit for me to review and pass on my thoughts to my viewers and I have great things to say about them. First of all, I adored their packaging. I loved everything on the box. But then when I opened the box up and saw inside how nicely packaged everything was, I was really impressed. They generously sent me three nail colors, gel nail colors by the way, the base coat, the top coat, and a mini UV slash LED light for curing. The base coat went on very nicely. It was a good consistency. The light worked very well. It was handy to use. And the colors are really spectacular. I had picked out a pale pink called Daydream and it's got a glittery effect. And I'm gonna do an accent nail that's a chocolatey color. And I thought that was a really cute color combo for Valentine's Day, like candy and chocolate. The gel colors and the top coat are both a thicker consistency which gives an overall really nice, shiny, glam look. So just like I do my budget DIYs for my home decorations, I was able to do a budget manicure at home myself and save a lot of money. 
And Madam Glam gave me a coupon code to pass along to all my viewers. It'll get you 30% off of your order using Rhonda G30 underscore one. And there'll be a link in my description box where you can go and make your purchase today. The next item from Kirkland's that I wanted to dupe was this really cool looking glass vase. It was clearance for $19.97 but I had on my mind that I would be able to do this at home much cheaper. I found this large glass hurricane vase at Goodwill for only $3. The technique that I'm going to use on this vase is painting on the inside, and that way you get the clean, glossy, clear glass look. I'm using Apple Barrel White Gloss Acrylic Craft Paint and a small paintbrush and I'm going to paint those dotted lines all inside of the glass face. And ever so often, I used my hair dryer to dry that paint a little bit inside so that when I roll the vase to paint on a new set of lines, then the paint that I already did isn't running everywhere. Just continue painting on the dotted lines until the vase is all filled up with them. This is what it looks like before you continue on to the next step. This part is really important. You need to spray a coat of clear gloss sealant inside covering the white dots or else when you put the greenish aqua color inside, your white dots go away. <laughs> I learned from experience. This is not my first rodeo. I've already done this project once and I lost my white dots and had to redo it. So take a page out of my book and put the clear sealant first. This is the paint color that I mixed up to go inside the vase, which coincidentally is the exact same color that I mixed up to go on the canvas for the first DIY that I turned out not liking for that project, but it is a good color for the vase. And I made it with Apple Barrel Laguna, a lot of white paint, and a touch of this marsh green. You'll want to lay out a grocery bag or craft paper or something to protect your surface because this is going to get quite messy. Make sure that your clear gloss is dry before continuing on. Then take your blue-green paint and pour it all into the vase. And by the way, you don't have to mix up your paints like what I'm doing. I just like to use what I have and I, when I don't have a color that I'm wanting to use, I just mix paints to get the color that I want. But I'm sure that you can find a very similar color to this in the store. I don't know what the name of it would be, but I'm sure that you could find one and not have to mess with mixing paints. Now this part's kind of fun. Now you want to roll the vase around with the paint inside so that it gets everywhere and covers all of the glass and see how the white dots are showing through behind that, or in front of that green paint. And if need be, you can use your paintbrush to help the paint get into the right areas. When the inside of the vase is totally covered, then leave it upside down to dry a little bit. When it's finished drying, then use a wet rag or a paper towel to clean up the paint around the top edge. So here's my version of the Kirkland's vase that didn't cost me $20. Instead, it only cost me $3 at the Goodwill.
check out the link in my description box to shop in my Amazon store where you'll find all my favorite craft supplies and home decor items on a budget. Next up on the Kirkland's dupe list are these candles. And I know you would have thought the same thing if you saw them. $7.99 and you know where you can get these candles. The Dollar Tree. I picked up three of them and I'm going to make my own labels. Now these won't be scented candles like the ones in Kirkland's, but they're going to be pretty. The first step is to remove their original labels. Here are my own labels that I made using the Canva program. There will be a link in my description box so that you can print these out for yourself and use. They don't say the same thing as the candles and Kirkland's because they had their scent names on them. I just made up some new things to put on here. <laughs> Once you have the labels printed, then cut them out. Then do a test fit around one of your candles to see what length you'll need to cut off. Then you'll need some clear contact paper. Cut a piece of the clear contact paper that is the same size as your label but adding about half an inch around each side. Then peel the backing off of the contact paper and stick it down to the front side of your label. And surprisingly, this went down with not a single wrinkle in it. Apply the label to the candle and it's all done. And how cute. I did notice after the fact that there was a date printed on only one of these jars. And so I just used some fingernail polish remover and it came right off. So if you run into that, just know it's easy to get off of there. And again, Kirkland's candle was $7.99. I was able to make mine for $1 because I already had the clear contact paper, but they do sell that at the Dollar Tree. So if you had to pay $2, it's still a really good bargain and so good that I made three of them. Let's take a look back at all three of our Kirkland dupes today. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed these DIYs and got some inspiration. If you want to see more DIY fun, click the link that I've provided for you right here and I'll see you next time. Bye.